Her Sports Six Nation Show in association with Opal. Welcome to episode five of the Her Sports Six Nations show brought to you by Opal, the exclusive car partner to the IRFU. You can catch up on this episode and every episode on YouTube and every podcast app. We have a competition this week for your chance to win two tickets to the Ireland and Scotland game in Belfast. All you have to do is comment below the answer to this question. Who was Ireland's first try scorer in the Six Nations? So I'm joined once again by Hannah Tyrrell and Yesterday, it was just released the news of the new squad for this Sunday's game against England. What do you make of it? Yeah, look, um, I suppose we all knew this was coming. It was just a case of it being officially announced and figuring out what players were going to be heading off with the sevens to Canada and, you know, what the squad would be look, would look like. Um, you know, and it's, it's the same names who have been heavily involved in seven squads over the last few years. That have gone, the likes of Amy Lee Murphy Crow, Stacey Flood, Lucy Mill Hall as captain, um, Eve Higgins and, and the rest, you know, and it is a big blow to to the fifteen squad, but again, they've as a squad known about this for the last couple of months, probably since the start of the campaign, you know, and they've been just taking it in their stride week by week and as I said, with with every game that passes and, you know, there's opportunities there for other players to, to come in and stake a claim in that jersey and, and they'll be chomping at the bit and, and ready to go and hoping to put in a big performance against England. So, you know, there's there's definitely pros and cons when you look at it that way. So hopefully we can add some experience and depth to our squad and that can help build for the future. So we obviously have those seven players gone, the likes of Parsons, Amy Lee Murphy, Crow, but with that comes seven new players. So we've like the likes of Laura Feely, Laura Sheehan, Mary Healy. Is there anyone you're particularly excited about um, that's coming in? Yeah, well, um, I suppose, again, looking to the future and looking to add that depth and experience, it's great to see the likes of Neve Byrne and uh, Alice O'Dowd being called up yeah. for the first time. Um, I think they've been involved in a couple of camps before, but this is their official call-up. Um, and it's great to see, particularly at centre, where we wouldn't have massive depth um, and also, uh, Alice O'Dell's a front row player, so it's great to see there. But um, a lot of those players you named have been in squads before, you know, maybe found themselves a little bit out of form or uh, the likes of Laura Feely, she's been injured. Um, so it's great to see her overcoming that injury and come back in and she will add huge experience to the squad alongside Sene Nu. And yes, yeah, Sene coming in, she probably has the most caps nearly of anyone else on the team. What do you make of her kind of reintroduction to the team? Yeah, look, Senna's always given her all when playing for Ireland. We actually made our, our debuts together uh, against Italy back in 2015, and she's been a great servant to Irish rugby. Um, she'd been playing with Old Belvedere this year. She's just recently um, transferred over to a club uh, to Exeter Chiefs, I think it is, in um, England. So she's always trying and looking to improve her game. A little bit surprised, I suppose, to see her in, considering she wasn't included in the initial squad, but I suppose... Uh, Greg thinks that he needs her experience and her leadership, which she will bring in droves. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if she gets in a match day squad over the next couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. And then we also have two injuries. So Aoife Wafer, obviously, just after her cap. And then we have Sam Monaghan out. She's been a key player. What difference will that make not having her in the team? Yeah, look, there are two big blows um, for the team. You know, when you compound that with the other sevens players leaving, there's a massive portion of the uh, squad from the Italy game that won't be involved against England. You know, and that's a big challenge for us. But I suppose Eve Wafer, it's quite disappointing. She won't be able to build on her first cap, but it gives another young back rower an opportunity to potentially come in and stake a claim. But I think Sam Monaghan has been one of our standout players this campaign and her injury just comes at a, a tough time, I suppose, when we need a big physical, uh, big physical player uh, to be able to step up against this English pack. And um, yeah, I can't who, comment. Who would you expect to take over her position then in that second row? I suppose looking at second rows, primarily Eve McDermott's the obvious candidate to replace her. Uh, you know, has been involved in Ireland squads and has a good few caps to her name. Um, has been in this squad and trained away, but hasn't managed to make a match day squad as of yet. So she'll be chomping at the bit, looking to you know try get her place back and and put in a big performance and hopefully you know kind of catch the eye of, of Greg and the the coaching staff. And she's very capable, you know. She's she's a number of caps and she'll just be delighted to put on the green jersey and, and try and put in a big performance. And everybody wants to play against England. We know how good they are, but like 
you don't need motivation to get up, uh, you know, to rile yourself up yeah. for a team like England. So for these players coming in, and there will be a lot of them getting their first taste of action of rugby in a while, um, it, it's an exciting time for them, I suppose. And then the pack obviously remains pretty much unchanged, we'd imagine, compared to the back line. Who do you expect to see in there, in the forwards? Yeah, um, I suppose team announcement will happen, I presume, um, soon enough, but... I expect it to be largely unchanged. I think it was a good outing against Italy. We rectified a lot of mistakes, particularly in our scrum and our line out. Um, I can't see Greg making many changes at all. So other than um, Aoife McDermott coming in there at second row, I think we'll keep obviously Nicola Friday as captain. We'll partner her. I think the front row will stay the same. Uh, Christy Haney, um, Neve Jones and Linda Jugang. And then also... Um, I can't see much changing in the back row with yeah. Dorothy Wall, Adele McMahon and Hannah O'Connor. I thought they worked really well together and have a really nice balance. The Where we're going to see the most changes in terms of the pack would be the uh, forward replacements that we have on the bench because we've lost the likes of Aoife Wafer, uh, Brittany Hogan is now gone with the sevens, Anna McGann who got game time in the earlier rounds is now gone with the sevens. So there'll be a lot of changes there. Um, I expect someone like Maeve O'Goleary to come in. She has been 24th man for uh, a couple of games now. Other than that, um, second row as a replacement, maybe someone like Grace Moore, who's kind of like a hybrid second row, back row, might come in yeah. uh, onto the bench. But that's a tricky one. Um, I, I don't know what Greg is thinking with that regard. You know, Would we see maybe at some point in the game Hannah O'Connor moving from eight into the second row if needed there? But... Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see when the team comes out. Mm -hmm. So the forwards are lucky enough that they can kind of keep the same like pattern that they have going, but the back line obviously is where the changes happen. We still have Avian Riley and Catherine Dane in at nine. We'd imagine maybe Catherine would probably be starting on Sunday, but who do you think will kind of fill the rest of the roles? Yeah, look, obviously we're going to see a lot of change here. Yeah. Essentially our back row, or sorry, our our back line from 11 to 15 is now gone um, to seven. So this will be a whole new formation. I imagine the halfback pairing will will stay the same with Catherine Dane and Nicole Cronin just to try and build that experience and playing together and learning how to play off each other. But to be honest, I'm taking a guess here at who it could be. Greg could opt to go straight uh, back in there with Sene Nupu because of the experience and leadership she brings. Um, I imagine Enya Breen will get the 13 shirt. Coming up next, we sat down with Jessica Hayden to discuss England's championships so far and their upcoming game against Ireland. After that, I'll be back in studio with Hannah Tyrrell. But just a reminder, you're listening to the Her Sports Six Nations show brought to you by Opal, the exclusive car partner to the IRFU. So thank you so much for joining us today. England have obviously been having a brilliant championship so far with the three bonus point wins. What have you made of their performance? Well, I would say, although it's fantastic, and I think we run out of the words to describe how fantastic England are, they're on a streak of 21 winning games so far. It's an incredible achievement for any team. And I think that the Red Roses really are putting themselves on the world map as one of the most formidable teams in any sport. But you have to say that the, the performances so far haven't been a match on the autumn performances of the Red Roses. I think that they were far more impressed in the autumn. I don't know whether that's a bit of fatigue that's creeping in um, and it feels almost unfair to try to criticise the Red Roses after being such a phenomenal force in women's rugby. But they will be looking, I think, to now try to make sure that they have the best team possible to face France in the final week, because I think that will be the grand stand decider. So this game this week, I think, is a chance for Simon Middleton to really refine his squad and get the best starting 15 that he can. So although the performances have been fantastic, of course, I mean, they've won by at least 52 points in all three matches. There's still room for improvement, which I think is a fantastic thing that you can say about women's rugby, that despite winning by 52 points at least in each game, there's still huge room for improvement in that squad. It's incredible, isn't it? When you, like The depth they have in their squad, I think it is. It, it's in, it, But even to be able to win by such a huge margin um, and yet haven't found your best 15 yet and to be able to bring in the calibre of players like Libby Thompson one week, Jess Breach another, 
you know, we've lost Abby Dow to injury, which yeah. is obviously a huge loss to them. But like Ellie Kildun came off the bench for her last week and was was brilliant, you know, and and like they're expecting Cocaine back in again this Sunday as well. Amy Cocaine back in after an injury as well. So she's probably gonna be looking to get a jersey, you'd imagine, as well. So why do you think it is England have such a squad depth to them and everyone is at such that a uh, high standard? I think it, you've completely hit the nail on the head that you have players in reserve and that almost England's second team could be its own Six Nations team. It's, it's, there's that much strength and depth. And I think that's because of the Premier 15s, of course. It's the only really high-level elite league in the world. I mean, France now they, they're, and New Zealand, they have these leagues coming through. Unfortunately, in Ireland, we're still not at that, that level yet. But the Premier 15s is, is amazing. And I think it's really helping to have these high performance centres around England that are helping girls from a young age get into rugby and then keeping them as women's rugby players and, and making these ex excellent players. And the competition in that league is huge now. I mean, only a few years ago, it wasn't a competitive league at all. And still Saracens and Harlequins, obviously the top two teams, but the other the, the players and other teams are, are exceptional. The talent is there. And I know in Ireland, obviously, you've got a, a nice Irish contingent at Wasps. Um, and that's been brilliant, hasn't it, for the Ireland squad over the over the recent years anyway. Um, so I think that's the main reason. And the other thing is pathways. So I think what some of the other unions tend to, to not do that really helps is have these strong performance pathways from under 13s, under 15s, under 18s, under 20s that are so important to being able to understand how players play and get them in that performance environment from a young age so they're the two things I think England do really well that provides that strength and depth. I, I think as well like this year we've seen with particularly Ireland, the, the under 18 Six Nations I think that'll have a massive um, help I suppose particularly in the Irish side with development but England and France um, have had an under 20s kind of Six Nations or an under 20s I suppose competition going for quite a while now and that's probably helped some of those younger players make that transition and that step up I suppose to the English uh, senior team and it's why they have that strength and depth and, and why they're able to just keep churning out these incredible players like you mentioned Amy Cocaine coming back from injury mm -hmm. and you know, there's nothing on her. She's an incredible player, but England haven't missed her because Lark no, Davies no. has been in wonderful try scoring form for them, you know, at the back of the mall, which is a potent force for England. Yeah. Like, and to be able to, I suppose, not miss a player of the calibre like Amy Cocaine is is exceptional. And they have that in positions one to fifteen across mm -hmm. the board. Um and I don't think the Six Nations, uh, maybe aside from the France game, gives England enough competition mm -hmm. to, oh, for, us, for us to see their best rugby, I suppose. Yeah. I think we, we didn't even, in, I say in the autumn, we had those two wonderful games against New Zealand that really, I mean, Amy Cocaine, she scored a hat-trick. I can't remember which game that was in, if that was New Zealand or USA or Canada, but she scored a hat-trick in that. And you're right, we're not even missing her because Lark Davis is still the top, like, I think she's still the top try scorer in the Premier 15s this season. You know, we have such huge depth in every position. You're absolutely right. Um, so, yeah, I think talking on the under-18s thing, I know that Greg McWilliams has said that there are a few players that he's keeping an eye on who are in the under 18s set up now who he thinks are going to have long island careers which is fantastic to hear and when I heard that in the press conference I was thinking thank goodness some good news and some some young talent coming through yeah yeah and looking ahead to the game against France obviously you said there that our, like England are obvious favourites for the game against Ireland and they're just going to be basically looking to build towards France. Is there any areas in particular like their set piece or just getting different caps up? Who, what do you think they're going to be focusing on on Sunday apart from getting that win? I think for England, this, the, the, no game is a walkover ever and Ireland are far from a team that you can walk over. And so I don't mean that at all. I do think that England will win, but... That's because of the, the strength and depth, as we've said, but also just they're vastly superior in terms of professionalism, as, as you both will well know. There's just such a, a gap between the teams, and that's not the, the island players' fault at all. So um, I don't mean to criticise their performances at all, but what England will really be looking to 
capitalize on is just improving their set piece. That's a huge part of their game that they've been struggling with so far. And also, I think it's about starting strong as well, because in each of England's games so far, they've had these rocky starts and it probably worse against Scotland, I would say. That was probably the worst start I've ever seen England have. And yet they still scored a try, I think, in like the seventh minute or something. So it is, as I say... So a bad it's, start it's, at seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. A bad yeah. start yeah. for seven yeah. minutes. <laughs> they got rolling. It feels ridiculous to criticise them, but they, they really struggled in the set piece against Wales. Wales were able to capitalise on those mistakes. And I think what England will be looking to um, take advantage of is the unforced errors in the Ireland team. We've seen so many of those so far, especially when they played France. You know, that's a huge game. That's a big um, challenge for them. And yet there were all these there are all these unforced errors and re- real slip ups that just shouldn't have happened. So I think England will be looking to apply the same pressure that France did and really force those errors again um, and really put pressure on the scrum in particular, because I think um, Ireland did really struggle at the scrum against France. And I think that's a, a somewhere that England are incredibly strong at. They have the the advantage of strength and conditioning and the professional structure of that, as well as the professional structure in their Premier 15 sides. That means that scrummaging is one of their fortes and is one of the things that makes England the best team in the world. So that's a part of the game that I think England will really be focusing on. But I also think they will be trying to, to see... I mean, I don't think they'll be using this game completely as a warm up fixture for France, but I do think that they will be looking to see different combinations, maybe, and just to see how different players cope under that pressure. And like there's been a lot of talk about momentum building and and the atmosphere for this weekend's game, because it's highly likely that this is going to be another record breaking crowd. Um, And do you think that the world record, I think it's around about 17,500 could go? I think current tickets sold are about 14,500, give or take, something like that. Do you think we could see a world record broken? I definitely can. So I've got the current figures that in front of me. So the current sales, and this was only about an hour ago, were 14,648. There's a 23,000 capacity at Welford Road and the world record is 17,740. So really that's 3,000 and yeah, 3,100 tickets that need to be sold to get the world record. I think we can probably get there. I think that the game at Gloucester, the England Wales game at Gloucester at King's Home had this huge crowd. The energy was amazing. The atmosphere was incredible. And I think that a lot of fans would have seen that and might just go and get tickets. We've also seen in other sports, you know, the women's Euros is just the England games have sold out. That's amazing. I, I didn't think that was going to happen this quickly. And I think the appetite for women's sport is really growing. And the fact that England aren't just playing in Twickenham, that they're moving around the country as they have done for a few years now is brilliant to build these areas of fan bases around the, the country and then when the Premier 15s is played there then those fans are more like to go there as well so I'm really hoping for a record break, uh, breaking crowd I mean if it's a world record breaking wouldn't that just be fantastic yeah look it, it's been an incredible few weeks I suppose for for English rugby uh us Irish over this side of the pond are hoping it's not as good a weekend. Yeah, ho- hopefully <laughs> there's a few, a few Irish fans in that world <laughs> record-breaking crowd there yeah. to support well, our team. Look, but. like it has been an incredible few weeks for England. Um, unfortunately, I also think it will be an English victory this weekend and setting up that big uh, Grand Slam game against France next weekend. But I just love watching England play because they're such a joy to watch. And when you have players like Jess Breach, Emily Scarrett... Ellie Kildon there and then like the likes of Marley Packer in in the forward line just kind of bossing everything and dominating it. they just love playing rugby and they're so so good at it and it just this Six Nations hopefully like really builds that excitement and that atmosphere for the World Cup that's coming up later in the year and, and hopefully you know we can get some cracking games in that as well 100% and just looking ahead to the game against France obviously this game against Ireland England will know that they're kind of coming up against a back line we've lost like we mentioned earlier about seven of our key players mm-hmm. do you think that will change the way they approach the game like will they try to target areas like we've lost Stacey Flood like people like key players for us and how we play our game do you think they'll try to target that? That's a really good question because with England, you tend to think that they play almost their own brand of rugby and it doesn't matter too much who the opposition are because it's such a dynamic um, and fantastic form of 
free flowing heads up rugby and as you've said the kind of the names that you've mentioned Jess Breach is one of those brilliant players who can just play in any game and she's world class she's gonna she's gonna get the ball and she's gonna run past anyone um so to an extent I would say no but you you have to play what's in front of you we always say this I think any coach would say you always play what's in front of you and with Ireland unfortunately with those key players missing I, I would struggle to to say that England won't be looking at that. I think they probably will and trying to, to capitalise on those missing key players. But there are still some fantastic players in the squad. It's just that those kind of speedsters who automatically go to you know sevens duty, they're, they're the ones that are missing. So potentially, I think this is going to be... Um, this is going to be a high scoring game for, for England's backs, I think. Yeah, look, it, I think it's going to be a difficult day for for Ireland um, at the weekend. But at the end of the day, it is, you know, 23 oh, players yeah. versus 23 players yeah. and anything could happen on the day. And that's the beauty of sports. So either way, we'll, 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 see, we'll see some good <laughs> rugby, even if it's just from one side, maybe we will see on yeah. Sunday. Of course. And we say in the, in the men's six nations, this happened. Italy won and no one thought that was going to happen. I mean, God knows what the bookies thought about that. Um, there's always a chance for, for a huge upset and who knows, maybe if, if England are um, underestimating Ireland or if we all are, because I think I, I might be, um, I, I'd hate to be so harsh on a team that I think are fantastic sports people and are exceptional women and are doing everything they can to play the best rugby they can and putting their, their lives on hold and not getting much in return. So I, I really hate to be so critical. But they they could well come back and be absolutely exceptional and and prove a point and prove that they don't need their sevens players and don't need the, the you know the players that are injured as well and that they're all exceptional players in their own right. So I won't write them off. I, I'd predict that England are going to win. I think I'd be stupid if I didn't. But I think that it's that there's definitely not written already. Anything can happen. Exactly. And that's yeah, what, that's I, what I love about sport. I think on our side, we we hope to be uh, <laughs> underestimated anyway. But thank you so much for coming on to talk to us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. It's been lovely. So looking ahead to this weekend's game, we've obviously discussed Ireland and England and then Friday night lights, we've Wales and France. What do you think that's going to be like? Yeah, well, look, similar to England, uh, I think France will be kind of We'll have one eye, I suppose, on the England-France game next weekend, but they'll know they have to do a job against this very much improved Welsh side. And Wales have had probably an easier start, I suppose, to the Six Nations and just played England, got a bit of a lesson. They're coming up against a dominant France team as well. However, like there are opportunities there. We haven't really seen France at their very best just yet. Their game has been littered with errors and mistakes and... You know, Wales have been pretty good so far from what we've seen and like it's an opportunity for them. Can they capitalise on these mistakes? Can they capitalise on uh, France not being really gelled together yet? They've had constant changes in that French 23 and I just wonder is that having an impact on their performances and making them have a lot of these errors? So I do think it will be a, a French win but... You know, if Wales can play to the standard they have at the earlier parts of the Six Nations, um, you know, I think they could cause France a bit of problems. Yeah, it is interesting because I'm sure if you look back on kind of the stats of it, Wales's penalty count and errors compared to France's, France has been a lot higher. They've made a lot more mistakes, like in silly mistakes as well, handling errors over the rock and everything. So do you think that's what France will be focusing on, just like those little errors that they won't get away with against England? Yeah, I think so. I think they really need to clean up that side of their game if they want to have a chance against this England side who have been motoring. But yeah, in the Wales game they'll be just looking again to just keep possession they've actually had very little possession uh, usually on the wrong side of it the last couple of games so they'll be hoping to hold on to the ball a little bit more go through the phases and um, the thing is with France they've had very little possession so far and yet they've still managed to get bonus point wins each time so with that kind of tells us the threats they have uh, how deadly they are when they're on the ball and, and that they have finishers so Wales will be, need to be really really careful uh, with that and not giving them too much space but bringing up a lot of line speed and putting that French team under pressure and hoping to cause these uh, knock-ons and unforced errors. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, um, judging on past performances, uh, both these teams are coming in without a win in the Six Nations. So both of these will be looking to, to get their first win and get off the bottom of the table and give their team a little bit of a lift. I think it'll be very closely contested. I don't think Italy have played really good rugby yet. Uh, Scotland, we've seen glimpses of it. The first game against England, they were pretty good. The Wales game was a really tight affair for them. Italy uh, have some excellent players in their squad. Um, I really like the look of their new centre, uh, De Inca. Mm -hmm. um, but they just haven't managed to put in a complete performance. And I think the loss to Ireland would be very damaging for them. Um, but it should be a really exciting game and a really competitive game this weekend. And it's hard to, to call the outcome of that one. Mm -hmm. So you gave us our score predictions in the last episode, but one we didn't get was for the Ireland-England game. Yeah. Knowing the new squad and everything now, do you have any number in mind for it? No, look, it's, it is hard. I haven't seen... We don't know what team is going to be brought out. Um, we, the England team hasn't been named either. Again, I do think it will be an England win, and I hope these girls, the Irish girls, prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just hoping that... Um, I, do, I think it'll be a bonus point win for England. But I, I just hope that Ireland put in a performance they can be proud of, regardless of the result. Um, and I'd love if they'd shock me and go out and get a win themselves. I, I, I don't want to put a number on it, um, but uh, look, going with my, my head is saying a, an England bonus point win. Mm -hmm. And you yourself played England before, and actually the last time Ireland have played them, February 2020, you know, right before COVID, everything obviously kind of changed there. Uh, but the scoreline wasn't too bad, 27-0. Why do you think there's kind of that difference now? in what we expect will be the score on Sunday? I suppose like that Ireland squad that I played in, there's been a lot of um, changes and transitions since that time. You know, again, we've talked about this before, retirements, uh, myself, Lindsay Peach, Kira Griffin, like we've lost a lot of experience within our squad, um, you know, and we've a new coach, new systems, new setups, trying to play this new brand of rugby. And I suppose ourselves in England have had very different pathways since that game back in 2020. You know, they've been professional, we haven't. Mm -hmm. COVID hit us pretty hard in terms of domestic rugby where the AIL wasn't played for quite a long time, whereas the English Premier 15s was still going on for, for the most part. Um, and I suppose we've just seen a gap in uh, the amount of rugby that both teams will have played and players individually will have played. Um, so, you know, I remember playing that game. I came off the bench and it was a really difficult match to play in. We didn't have a lot of possession. Our defence was quite good. But England just bring a lot of physicality and dominance and they try to force you into your own mistakes. And looking ahead to this weekend, you know, Ireland again will have a whole new back line. A lot of new players on the bench getting their first taste of uh, international rugby this season. Um, so what I'm hoping is they don't succumb to that pressure and they start to play their own game and, and don't be forced into playing rugby that they don't want to play or they're not, you know, set they're up They're not to comfortable play. with. Yeah. Just because England are trying to force them into that. And I just hope it's a really good performance. We can maybe see some new players really step up and shine and, and that we can, you know... Uh, get them that experience, get that squad depth and, and really start to look to the future because, you know, this is going to test our depth massively. Um, you know, we're missing probably up to 10 players, I think Greg said, from the Italy squad. Um, but there's 10 players getting opportunities to stake a claim for a jersey and it's great they just announced a summer tour. Um, I think I heard a rumour it's going to be in Japan. Um, I think... Murray Kinsler let that one out the bag um, this morning, I think it was. So that's a fantastic opportunity to play more games. You know, Japan are, are going to the World Cup, so they'll be looking forward to that. But the, it's, it, the building has already started this Six Nations, but the England game is a true test of where we're at. And as I said, we're missing those sevens players, but other players have opportunities. Yeah, the, that chance, it kind of shows who's going to stand up maybe and like who won't. And obviously, the loss of these players has hit the Ireland team hard, but also your fantasy rugby team, I'd yeah. imagine you're losing like Eve Higgins, other players. So who are you going to bring in now to replace those players? Yeah, look, um, yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I have to wait and see what teams come out and who whose name to start, but... 
Um, I'm hoping the likes of Jess Breach is, is still there on the wing. Um, the French team has been named, so I'm sticking with Sansous. Uh, although Druan, it's actually funny, Caroline Druan, the French 10, has not been named in the squad again. So I would imagine she's gone off to sevens with France as well. So I'll need to make a few changes there. But it'll probably be French uh, dominated this week. Are you um, afraid to put the English players kind of in there? I, like... I, to get points, I want to put the English players in there, but also I don't want England to win at the weekend. So I'm stuck in that kind of catch-22, but I'll, I'll have a few of them in there, probably French. Um, I think I'll keep uh, Linda Jugang. I've had her in my squad for most of the um, campaign so far. Tricky, or Adele McMahon's been in there too. So um, yeah, I'll add a few faces in there and see what squads and what teams are announced. And there. will will any of the new players get a look in, do you think? Well, obviously you're going to wait and see who's kind of maybe starting or not, but would you name any of them even on the bench? Well, yeah, like it depends who he names and what positions they have. It depends what my budget allows for, but um, absolutely, like I've full faith that those girls who get the opportunity to put on a green jersey this weekend will give 100% to the cause you know, and we'll leave nothing out there. Um, and, you know, that's bound to get me some points somewhere. <laughs> you know, they'll be putting in tackles left, right and centre and that gets you points all day, so. Even in defending, I suppose, even if that's what they're doing for the 80 Absolutely. minutes. Yeah. And then looking ahead, I suppose, we're not going to get a score prediction out of you, I don't think, no. for, our, for <laughs> our game. Italy and Scotland, though, we imagine that's the most well-matched. If you had to put in a, uh, if you had to, Put a score prediction on it for who you want to win. What would you say? I'd probably say Scotland to shade it, just based on performances they've put in so far. Um, and they have the likes of Chloe Raleigh back and Helen Nelson steering the ship there. Um, I think it'll be a high-scoring game. I think it'll be something like 29-24 to Scotland. Um, I do think there'll be a lot of try scores, probably even higher than that. Yeah, and then Wales and France. Friday night games, kind of always a different atmosphere as well. So obviously we're expecting France to come out with the win, but as we were saying, they have had errors and issues. So what do you think the final score will be there? Yeah, like I think Wales are at home for this one. And France don't usually travel too well. Uh, we saw that in the last game they played. They weren't really convincing, I suppose, even though they came out with a bonus point win. I do think they'll have another bonus point win, but... Around about 33-10 to, to France. 33-10. And do you think Wales, like, if they do capitalise on those mistakes early, do you think they could get any higher than, than that 10 against this no. French side? No. <laughs> no. To be honest, actually thinking about it now, France have probably put out quite a strong squad. Mm -hmm. uh, even without Drouin, they probably score more than 33 points. So maybe I'll change that to 47 points to 10. To 10, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Welsh side, anyway, getting any points on the board against France will, will be good for them. So hopefully our game against England won't be too much of a walkover, but it'll be interesting to see what that final score is there. So last week, Hannah was actually joined in studio by Will Connors and Emer Constein for a game of You Laugh, You Lose. I'm Emer Constein and this is You Laugh, You Lose. Emer, you go first. Oh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> okay. If you're American before you go to the bathroom and American when you leave the bathroom, what are you while you're in the bathroom? I don't know. I'm trying not to look so I don't laugh. <laughs> I don't know, go on. He just laughed. No. Oh crap! <laughs> I forgot the aim of the game! Yeah. Um, I don't know what that would be. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what is the answer. European. Oh. <clears throat> that was not funny whatsoever. Do you want me to Do you going? get that one? Because you look like you do. No, I don't actually get that. <laughs> you lose again. I, I will happily lose with that one. I can't. European. Um... Oh. <laughs> I don't get it. I didn't listen, I to, the, I didn't listen didn't. to the actual joke. <laughs> What did the tomato say to the other tomato during a race? I don't know. I can't imagine it's very funny. Ketchup. It would be ketchup, but... You're good. What's brown and sticky? A, a stick. stick. That was good, good to that you got it. 
I had different I've things in my head there, before. to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring the tone down. Two muffins are sitting in an oven. One turned to the other and said, wow, it's pretty hot in here. The other one shouted, wow, we're talking muffin. Why? I hear one so long. <laughs> I actually don't know. I was like, where's the oh, elephant? <laughs> I went. Yeah, like, mine's like a one line. Just like... I know, all of mine are essays. Why did the golfer bring two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. That's good. He's, he's good. He's, he's actually so yeah. I, I thought he would. I thought he would be the worst at this. What did a policeman say to his belly button? I don't know. I don't know. You're under a vest. <laughs> what do you call an alligator detective? I know this one. A crocodile. An investigator. An investigator. Yeah, not that funny, but at least no. I read it better this time. <laughs> I'm still expecting like another joke to come from it. Yeah, no. Yeah. You're right, you're waiting for the funny part. Yeah. Why don't they play poker in the jungle? It just wouldn't make sense. Too many cheetahs. Well, it has no sense of humor. No. What do you call a pig that does karate? Pork. Chop. That's really good. Pork chop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pork chop. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't find that one funny? I, I was just focused on not laughing, to be honest. Because I'm losing about 4 nil, I think. Porked off. Woo. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? I'm a joke connoisseur, I know all these. He was a bit like you. He was Winning outstanding medals. in his field. Oh! I'm breathing <laughs> incredibly loudly. What do cows most like to read? wouldn't really make sense. I was going to say movies, that's to, no. Yeah. Movies. I just can't imagine a cow reading. Catalogues. Yeah. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they use honeycombs. It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you were good. That last one got you though. Yeah, it was your it was own joke like... that you knew the answer to. That's it for episode five of the Her Sport Six Nations. To all you listening at home, we have a competition for your chance to win two tickets to the Ireland and Scotland game in Belfast. All you have to do is answer this question. Who was Ireland's first try scorer in the Six Nations? Her Sports Six Nations show in association with Opal.